Hi guys, if you're new here, hi, my name is Sophie and I am a first year fourth grade teacher and this video is going to be student teaching tips. Hi, a few of you that follow me over on Instagram and here on YouTube are college students that will be student teaching soon or maybe you have started student teaching so I wanted to make this video of just kind of reflecting on my own student teaching experience, share things that were really beneficial to me in hopes that maybe that will help some of you or just ease some of your nerves if you haven't started student teaching yet. So, yeah. So my first tip would be to reach out to your mentor teachers as soon as you find out who they are. So for my first student teaching semester, I met with my supervisor and then she organized the meeting between me and my mentor teacher. And so we met, I believe it was the Friday before we started school. And the first couple days were just getting ready for the school year. So they weren't with students yet. And so I was able to go to the classroom, meet my mentor teacher. And that was really a nice opportunity to get to talk to her before the school year started, learn a little bit about her, tell her about myself and just get familiar with the classroom and build that rapport with her, which I think was really important because on the first day, you don't just want to show up not having spoken to your mentor teacher, not knowing anything about the classroom that you're going to be going into. Obviously you might not have that opportunity, like if you don't get that information, but I'd say if you do get that information if you get their email their phone number i would reach out to them and at least just introduce yourself just to start off on a good foot and so second semester also when i got my new mentor teacher i reached out to her i just introduced myself said that i was super excited and was looking forward to meeting her and meeting the students um, and she responded right away and i feel like that just leaves a good impression that you are eager you're excited to learn and that you're ready. My second student teaching tip would be get involved as much as possible. So my first student teaching placement, I was there from the second my mentor teacher got there in the morning, which I believe was around like 7.30. And then some days she stayed till like 4, 4.35. And all the hours she was there, I would also go in. And there was a time over winter break where she went in to start planning. And I also went in. Um, I went to all the meetings, the SS team meetings, staff meetings, faculty meetings, and all of those things first will look really good on a resume. And the second of all, it just gives you more insight into what it's like as a teacher. And so I feel like by going to all of those things and not just showing up, you know, when the kids were there gave me a real good perspective of what it's like to be a teacher. What are all of their responsibilities? What do you need to do like outside of your contract hours? And I'd have a lot of conversations with my mentor teacher about, okay, how much time do you spend on all of these things? How much time do you spend outside of school hours working on things? And obviously everybody's different. Like my first mentor teacher would spend hours outside of her contract hours going into the classroom, organizing, cleaning, prepping, um, would do stuff at home like she was a workaholic she worked all the time which if that works for you that's amazing my second mentor teacher um, would leave pretty soon after school ended which I also think is really good to prevent burnout and then she would go home she would work out and then she would work on IEPs and whatever she had to do at home so I feel like everybody's different and just what works for you is really helpful but going along with whatever your mentor teacher does so like my first semester I was really involved I was at school all the time went to all the meetings my second semester I would be at school for all the hours but then when my mentor teacher would leave I would leave and if she told me I didn't really need to go to all the meetings, I wouldn't go, but I would go to all the IEP meetings, all the SST meetings. I would still go to faculty meetings so I could really understand what it was like to be a teacher. So I definitely highly recommend going to faculty meetings, going to SST meetings or IEP meetings if you're allowed to and if you're able to, because I feel like it really helps you get a good understanding of what it's like to be a teacher. And it also gives you a good understanding of like the school culture and the school climate. And I feel like that is really helpful especially when you go to start your teaching job, just knowing what it's like at different schools. Like what are their expectations when it comes to planning times? What are their expectations when it comes to um, staff meetings? Do they have specials? Do they have all of these programs? And so by really like getting to know your student teaching school and being as involved in po as possible, you'll really... Um, gain a lot of insight into the school. My third student teaching tip would be to jump in as soon as possible with the teaching. So I have wanted to be a teacher my whole entire life. 
And during college, I didn't really get, like I babysat and I tutored, but I didn't really have a lot of experience actually getting to go into the classroom. And part of that was because my senior year is when COVID hit. And so the times that we were supposed to really go into schools and start like field work, we didn't get that opportunity to do. And so when I was student teaching, I was really excited and looking forward to finally being in the classroom with the whole class and not just tutoring one-on-one -on -one or in a small group setting or over Zoom. Like I was really excited to actually be in the classroom. And I was in first grade, which was my dream. I was really hoping for kindergarten or first grade. So I was super excited. The kids were amazing. Um, and so I remember just my mentor teacher was like, just hop in, like do what feels right. And so on the first day, I started making connections with all the students. I um if they had questions i'd go around and answer their questions and i'd also obviously take notes my mentor teacher was incredible and used so many amazing strategies and so i was always taking notes on what she was doing but after i would say like the first week i took like actual notes in my notebook and then sometimes if i would see something really awesome that she did or something that i wanted to remember i jot it down in my notebook that i kept at my desk um, but other than that, like I was hands on, I was always with the kids, listening to my mentor teacher, modeling the behavior. Um, and so getting that hands on experience. And then I was always asking my mentor teacher, like, oh, what can I do? Like, what can I help with? And so she'd give me different tasks and things. And then I would say, I don't know, maybe like a month into teaching um, was when I started to take over stuff. And so the first lesson that I took over was math. And so I started teaching and planning math every day. And then I got to do language arts and slowly but surely I was taking over the whole day. And that was really awesome. And so I feel like not everybody is gonna be super comfortable with jumping in right away, especially if you haven't had much experience or you know if you're just nervous or depending on your mentor teacher and the school site and the classroom environment but if you are i definitely would recommend just jumping in and doing as much as you can and that you're comfortable with because you'll get more out of the experience rather than just sitting there and observing and taking notes like obviously that's also important but i feel like the best experience is by just doing it and especially like this year being a first year teacher like all of my classes taking notes on things readings like none of that prepares you like actually being in the classroom and being faced with different situations and scenarios and things that happen so the best way to get ready for it is just by jumping right in all right my fourth student teaching tip is to be open to constructive feedback so obviously when you're a student teacher you don't know everything right like you're there to learn you're there to grow as a teacher and that was something that i new and so i wanted to become a better teacher and so every time i would have meetings with my mentor teacher or my university supervisor um, i would always be open to their suggestions and so sometimes i would just ask like what do you recommend i do for this or do you have any ideas of how i could better help this student or how i could um, better my classroom management and sometimes they would just look at my lesson plan and offer suggestions or feedback. And after my lessons, I would always have debriefs with my supervisor and she would tell me things that I did really well. And then she would offer some things for me to try next time. And it was never like, oh, you did bad. You should do this instead. It was just like, that was really great. Here are some more strategies that you can try. And she was always like, if it doesn't work for you, if it doesn't work for your style, that's fine, but you might as well try it. And I feel like in the student teaching, placement and environment especially depending on your mentor teacher it's really beneficial to try out different classroom management techniques different strategies you know different teaching styles because that's like your chance to see what works see what doesn't because then you're able to like figure out okay what do i like to do for classroom management what do i like how do i like to teach what do i like to do and then when you get your own classroom you can kind of figure out what works for you and what doesn't. And it also has to do with the class, like things that I did first semester and first grade didn't work for first through sixth SDC and vice versa. And even now in my fourth grade class, like not every strategy is gonna work for every class. Like it may be a great strategy, but it just depends on your students, their needs, the type of class you have. Um, but definitely be open to that feedback and try it out because the worst thing that'll happen if they give you a feedback and you try it out and you're like oh that went awful or i don't really like that idea but you tried it then you know okay i tried that it didn't work it's not for me and then you can move on but i definitely wouldn't go into it with the attitude that like i know everything i'm not going to learn anything because that's not why you student teach you student teach to get 
to get better, to learn things, and to become prepared to be a teacher of your own classroom. All right, now my fifth and final tip for student teaching is to make connections in your placements. And so, like I said, I am very close with my mentor teachers. I still text them, I still talk to them. Um, I asked them for advice. They wrote me letters of recommendation. They came to my wedding. Like I am very close with them and I'm very grateful for having amazing student teachers. But that being said, like some people don't vibe with their mentor teachers. Some people don't have the best mentor teachers, unfortunately. Like I've, I've had friends who didn't love their mentor teachers, but either way, try to have a positive outlook because even if let's say you have a mentor teacher that you're like, okay, they are not like me, their teaching style is not like mine, you can still learn something from that, right? Like you can still realize, okay, like I'm seeing how they're handling that situation or how they're talking to that student and that's not how I'm gonna do it. And then you can realize that and learn from that. But I hope that you have a good mentor teacher because it really would be a bummer if it wasn't a positive experience for you, but just try to make the best of it. But anyway, that's not what this last piece of advice is about. Oh my gosh, also my nose just got like super stuffy. So sorry if I sound weird. Um, but to make connections. So I invited both of my principals to watch me teach a lesson so that they could write me a letter of recommendation. I made connections with all the teachers at my school. So like in when I was in first grade, one of the second grade teachers had a one-two combo. And so we would like make copies and plan with her sometimes. And then I had a friend at the school who was student teaching in second grade. So I became friends with the second grade team. Um, all the teachers would eat together in the lounge, which was really nice. And so I got to talk with all of them and just kind of like make friends with them and learn from them. And I was able to go and observe other classes, which was really helpful. And then they gave me a bunch of resources. Like one of the schools I was at, whenever a teacher didn't want something or if they were retiring, they would leave it in the lounge. And my mentor teacher was always like, take it, take whatever is here. Because she was like, even if you don't end up using it, you might as well gather all the supplies that you can. And so I would, I would, <laughs> there was a ton of magic school bu books one time and I literally took them all and it was like 50 books and I got home and my, um, boyfriend at the time was like what is this like why do you have a million books in your car and I was like because I don't know what I'm going to teach and maybe I want these books I love the magic school bus so take advantage of all those opportunities and make connections with everybody because you never know you never know if you'll want to end up applying to the school or the district you never know who people knows or who talks um so you just want to make a good impression and going off of that um you know, dress professionally, act professionally, be careful about what you talk about when you're at your student teaching placement. You never know who might hear. Um, I would definitely show up the first few days like more formal. Like I think on my first day, I wore like a nice cute dress. Like I talked to the other teachers about they were what they were wearing. Um, but at my schools that I student teach at, the dress code was very casual. So my mentor teacher and the other teachers at the school would wear jeans a lot. They would wear just like comfortable clothes, which honestly, I think as a teacher, you should be able to wear that because especially if you're in the younger grades or sped, like you're running around, you're on the floor, you're on the carpet, like you're getting dirty. Like I had so many kids drop markers on me and stuff. Like my white sneakers have like expo marker marks on them. Like you're getting dirty. But that being said, if everybody goes to work in like really nice blouses and pants and they all look really professional, like you want to look like that. So I would just kind of read the environment. Like obviously if everyone's wearing jeans and sneakers and dress super casual, you still want to make a good impression. Like don't wear like ripped jeans and a crop top, like look presentable, but you know, do whatever you feel is right. And you could always ask your mentor teacher if you're not sure about an outfit. Um, for observations, I'd always dress up a little bit more just because my supervisor would watch it and I wanted to look good. My mentor teacher would say that if you look more, um, what would she say? She was like, if you look more professional, the kids treat you like that. So I don't know. I don't know if I found that quite true. I think that if you dress more professional, like you feel more professional and more confident. And so then maybe the kids will treat you with a little bit more respect. But I also think that just based off of how you talk to the kids and how you treat them and how you teach, you'll be able to gain respect off of that and not necessarily your outfits. Like the other day, it was dress like your favorite character day. And all of the teachers at my school were, um, we were party animals for Halloween. And so we all wore onesies with party hats. 
and I was a panda. And so for just like your favorite book character day, we all wore a onesie. So I was a panda and my book was Please Mr. Panda. And my students took me seriously all day. Like I am funny. They laugh at me. They think I'm funny, but they also like have mutual respect with me and they listen. So that being said, if everybody at your school dresses casual and you get the okay from your mentor teacher, like wear jeans, go for it. But if you don't feel comfortable with that or if everybody dresses to the nines, maybe don't wear jeans every day. So that's my two cents. Maybe some of it was helpful if it was, yay. Um, but yeah, I'd say just hop in there, make connections and make the best out of it. And even if you don't, if you're not the biggest fan of the school or that you're a mentor teacher, like the kids will love you. The kids want to see you every day. They want to learn from you. And so at the very least, just show up for the kids, love the kids and try out different teaching strategies and techniques because it's a learning opportunity and the more you put into it the more strategies and things you try out the more you're gonna learn okay well, i'm gonna end the video here i hope that it was helpful if it was i would love if you liked and subscribed for more videos i am gonna plan on making some more videos soon about interviewing process teaching portfolios um all those kind of things and any other videos that you'd like to see let me know message me on instagram um comment on my video also if you do message me on instagram and i don't follow you sometimes it takes me a little while to see the messages just because i'm slow when i fall asleep at like 7 p.m and i forget to look through my messages but i promise i will eventually see them and respond i had like quite a few really nice messages a few weeks ago that i saw like weeks after the fact and then i finally responded but i felt bad that it was like three weeks later so if i respond three weeks later it's not that i'm ignoring you it's that i didn't see your message for three weeks um but that being said please follow me message me i love talking to you all so i will see you in my next video have a fabulous rest of your day or weekend and i'll see you soon bye